Alrighty, we are back with another repair video. Today is something a little bit different. We've got a Nintendo Switch Lite here. We've got a couple of busted pads under the USB-C port. Now, only one of those pads actually matters because it goes to that little silver via thing or whatever it is. Uh, the other one doesn't appear to lead anywhere, so it's a ground pad. So I don't really care about that. But first up, I'm just going to do some continuity. Checks. I think that fees had. If not, oh well. Let's make sure that the other pads around it do work okay. They look okay, apart from those two. Just want to make sure though. So that multimeter's in continuity mode. Doing some beep beep beeps. That one's the ground pad. Don't care about that. Don't need to put anything there. This is fine. We'll leave that. The other one, however, definitely does need to be replaced. So, bear with me here because I've this is the first time I've tried to repair torn pads like this. And I only just got the new pad strips in the mail the other day. And they're a lot smaller than I thought they'd be. I know it's micro-soldering, but I thought they'd be a little bit bigger. So this was a little bit of a challenge, um, but in the end I did get there. So I did skip ahead, skip ahead a little bit because no one wants to see me just fighting with a blank piece of copper sheets trying to get this one little pad off, but I did get it off in the end, and that's it there. So I was hoping it would be a little bit longer that when I went to put this solar mask on there'd actually be something for it to grip to but it is what it is I didn't really know what I was buying or how big they'd be so I did still try to put the solar mask on UV light afterwards to try and harden it but I don't think my UV light's actually strong enough it's a cheapy little thing. So I did try put a solar mask on the bottom and the top. Try and hold that pad in place a bit better. Once that was all down, get some fresh solder on those rest of the pads. scared that that little replacement pad was going to fly away with the wind or get stuck to the soldering iron but it held its ground get some good fresh unleaded solder on the rest of the pads carefully as I need. I did put flux down first, which I think you saw. The uh, redone pad seemed to take it like a champion. Definitely looks a bit close to that other pad though. Move it across just a little bit, just to make sure they don't bridge. These things are seriously small. Really small.
ports I did buy were off a regular switch so they do still fit however they're a bit longer and you need to modify the casing of the switch light for them to fit but it looks like all the pins line up which is a good start and because of my terrible uh, video videoing filming setup at the moment I will have to reflow this off screen because I wanted to do it from the bottom I don't want to burn the battery connector next to it anyway that was all good and done I plugged it into my amp meter and I got zero amperage being drawn to the battery now given it had a dicky USB-C port there's a chance that the M92 got blown up or whatever happens to it so we're just going to replace the M92 as well because that port did look good and voltage was coming in uh, after that port but still zero amps being drawn by the battery so this is only like the second time that we've opened a switch so this was a bit of a struggle Fresh flux. Fresh solder and I just destroyed a cap. Well not destroyed but I removed a cap. Which I wasn't supposed to do. Reapply the solder to the rest of these pads and find our rogue capacitor. Again, that thing is seriously small. Alright, as I said, it was like the second, second time I've opened up a switch. This is a tiny, and I really did struggle trying to get this little capacitor back in place. goes to show what can happen when you're a little bit not careful with uh, with soldering these tiny little things looks in place but it does look a little bit dicky Try and line it up a bit better. You always see that when you put flux down, good flux I should say, and you use the uh, heat station to reflow these things, you usually do a bit of a little flux dance where it finds its little home position on its own in a way. My flux paste doesn't really seem to do that. Because even with that amount of flux on there, hit it with the heat, and it just doesn't quite do the little 
dance and, and go to its home position. So I think I need to look in to investing in some better flux, not that weird pasty stuff. But anyway, capacitors back in place. I'm trying to get this M92 back down in place. Where are we? There we go. Try to just get a peek at this. Oh, that doesn't line up quite right, does it? Looks a little off. Looks a little off. Try this again. More flux. Fluxy paste. Terrible pen. Heat. Not doing the dance like I wanted to do the dance. Try and push it by hand. That seems to line up pretty good. Again, apologies for the terrible quality of the microscope, but it's just a cheapy off eBay. Just a cheapy one. need to clean up a bit because there's so much of that flux paste around it's starting to look a bit yellow. Wee -wee 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 -wee. So yellow. Like a goblin's teeth. So yellow. Plugging it into the amp meter to see if it's doing anything. It's actually worse now. I'm getting five five volts and zero amps, whereas before I was getting nine volts and zero amps. So I've changed the problem. I haven't fixed the problem, but it's changed. So I kind of know that something's still going on with this M92. I didn't think it looked too bad. Solder on the legs of the USB C port before. This video is a little bit all over the shop. I had a few distractions when I was trying to get this video together. Kids, dogs, females. Put the legs on. on there too. Definitely need flux. So with that all done, M92 soldered around the edge and the USB-C port all soldered in place. I was able to plug it in. I got, I think it was 9 volts still and 1.1 amps. I'd show you the amp meter but again my filming setup for now is terrible. So with that drawing 1.1 amps, I'm going to just plug the rest of the connectors in and hopefully see if we get something on screen. If so, I'd be quite happy. I'd be very happy indeed. That's the Joy-Con connector there. Pretty little screen and digitizer area in. rail for the other side of the Joy-Cons and whatever else is over there. Some little antenna wires. Don't really know what they power properly. Might be something to do with Wi-Fi. I haven't opened enough of these things to know. Get this charger plugged in. Hey! Turns on. Does turn on, does charge the screen is buggered. So I'll get that looked at later. I don't have any replacement screens back now, but thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.